Hello and welcome to Nationwide on the NTA. I am Ifoma Ojinta. And remember, you can follow this news broadcast live on our website, nta.ng slash live, and all our social media platforms displayed on the screen for updates. Now, in what could best be described as a bold stand against malaria, a major public health challenge in the country, the federal government has formally inaugurated the Nigeria and Malaria Council. President Muhammad Buhari, who performed the ceremony, emphasized that eliminating the disease remains a priority on his administration's agenda. Details of the report will be brought to you subsequently. Still talking health, the Ebony State Ministry of Health says a 32-year-old Ebony native farmer who returned from River State after a brief travel has tested positive to monkeypox in Ebony State. The State Commissioner for Health, Dr. Daniel Umezurike, said the suspected case of monkeypox was reported on the 10th of August 2022 at Alex Ekweme Federal University Teaching Hospital at Bakeliki with the patient presenting history of fever, musculopapular rash, sore throat, headache, and generalized weakness of the body. The patient was admitted in a Bonny State Isolation Center and is currently being managed for monkey paws and is responding to treatment. Dr. Umezuriki stated that the ministry had ramped up surveillance to curb the spread of this infectious disease by identifying seven contacts and line listed which are currently being followed up with active case search heightened across all the local government areas urging residents to observe safety measures to reduce the spread of the virus. The military says the dynamics in internal security operations to combat current and emerging threats requires continuous training of personnel to effectively secure their areas of responsibility. This has necessitated the cheetah strike simulation exercise for 93 Battalion at the Land Forces Simulation Center, Giri Abuja. Defense correspondent Ismail Musa has details. The Land Forces Simulation Center, established in 2019, focuses on enhancing the operational proficiency of Army personnel. The simulation exercise is to prepare them ahead of real-life events. This is what informed Exercise Cheetah Strike for the 93 Battalion. This simulation exercise will be structured to present realistic scenarios similar to threats in your area of responsibility. I am confident that the desired objectives of this simulation exercise will be achieved to enhance professionalism in the battalion in line with the vision of the Chief of Army Staff. This simulation exercise is meant to simulate a joint task force battalion comprising an integrated force of military, police, and other security agencies in the art of planning preparation and conduct of military operations on the war using Microsoft software. The center is deploying technologies for capacity building and force multiplication. From the Nigerian Army Simulation Center in Giri, Abuja, Ismail Musa, NTA News. Improved quality of life for the citizenry, positive plan that will include job opportunities and poverty reduction for Nigerian youths as well as control of firearms into the country should be the primary focus of presidential candidates come 2023 general elections. These are some of the points captured at the annual public lecture of the Blueprint Impact Series and Awards. The 2023 election provides us with yet another good opportunity to have a competence-driven election of new leaders to enhance national unity and development. There is no doubt that security is top agenda for the 2023 politics. We must approach the issue of security from a wider perspective, including into it that involves both physical protection of lives and properties and the well-being of citizens. 
There were award presentations to notable Nigerians who have in one way or the other contributed to nation building. Now, police in Nasrallah State say they have intensified search and rescue operations with deployments of a combined team led by ACP Haliru Aliu Area Commander Kwanga Area Command to rescue the Commissioner for Information Yakubu Lawal Ada who has been abducted at his residence in Nasarawa Igon local government area of the state Monday evening. In a statement, the Commissioner of Police Nasarawa State further appealed to anyone with useful information that will assist the command to rescue the victim or arrest of the suspect to reach out to the command via the following numbers displayed on the screen. And now to our first report, we earlier told you that the federal government has formally inaugurated the Nigeria and Malaria Council and State House correspondent Adamo Sambo has details. Despite the reduction in malaria prevalence from 42% to 23% in the last decade, records show that Nigeria still accounts for 27% of the 50 million global malaria cases annually and 32% of the nearly 100,000 deaths related to the disease. To end malaria in Nigeria, experts say continuous advocacy, coordinated actions, and sustained local resource mobilization cannot be overemphasized. And this informed the inauguration of Nigeria and Malaria Council, a public-private partnership initiative chaired by Africa's richest man, Ali Kodangote, to, amongst others, remove operational bottlenecks and resource gaps under the National Malaria Strategic Plan. The establishment of this council is a great opportunity to ensure the patient funding to protect the progress made so far, sustain the progress, and be on an irreversible pathway to ending malaria for good. What is important to note today is that malaria is preventable, treatable, and curable. Malaria vaccine promises to be a game changer. We need the malaria intervention toolkit. And Nigeria is expected to lead effort in Africa to work development of the vaccine and meeting the required financing obligation. President Muhammad Buhari, who inaugurated the council, said apart from causing severe disease and complication in pregnant women leading to high rates of miscarriages, malaria is also responsible for a considerable proportion of deaths in infants and young children under the age of five. With the additional advocacy and funding, the council will bring to the malaria control drive we can anticipate a reduction in malaria burden that ensure that our children, pregnant women, indeed all Nigerians, are shielded from the disease. We must work together to reduce the unnecessary deaths attributable to malaria and ultimately improve the well-being of citizens. The president described the membership of the council comprising a group of eminent personalities who have met their marks across all walks of life as a reflection of government's commitment to significantly reduce the malaria burden in Nigeria to a level where it is no longer a public health issue. The successful implementation of the council agenda will result in improvement in the quality of life, health and well-being of Nigerians by providing impetus for malaria elimination and by saving about 687 billion naira nationally, which is the estimated economic burden of malaria for 2022. The savings could increase to 2 trillion naira in 2030. A concerted strategy to tackle malaria, therefore, has both public health as well as socio-economic benefits for Nigeria. Apart from the desired advocacy, the Nigeria and Malaria Council has a mission to also galvanize action and mobilize resources towards ending malaria in Nigeria by the year 2030. From the State House, Adamusambu, NTA News.
The federal government says its commitment to ensuring farmers have the appropriate incentives to guarantee continued participation in the farming business is unwavering. Minister of Industry, Trade and Investment, Nii Adibayo, said this at the inauguration of a 15-man technical committee for implementation of the ban on foreigners purchasing agri-commodities from farm gates. Benny Adams reports. On the 10th of March, the Federal Executive Council approved a memo banning foreigners or their agents from purchasing agricultural commodities at farm gates across the country. In marking words with action, the Minister of Industry, Trade and Investment, Ni Adebayo, has given life to the recommendations contained in the memo with a marching order for implementation. Facilitate establishment of enforcement organs in the state and local governments. Five, to facilitate signing of executive order by Mr. President, specifying penalties and fines for violators. Indeed, the full implementation of the PEC approval and promotion of our business in Nigeria through right hand weight driving and ban of foreigners as representatives of the children and the fact that it is at the bank we note that ensure that farmers get commensurate value for their country. The committee is also expected to liaise with state governments for the establishment of commodity aggregation centers for export in strategic locations across the country. In Abuja, Benny Adams, NTA News. President Muhammad Buhari has constituted a federal executive cabinet committee under the chairmanship of the vice president to resolve the lingering disputes over the Paris Club refund. Attorney General of the Federation and Minister of Justice, Abubakar Malani, disclosed this while explaining efforts to resolve the controversies surrounding the issue on Good Morning Nigeria. Ekemeni Williams has more details. Through the judgment. As if appearing before a court of law, Minister of Justice Abubakar Malami tendered one document after the other as he removed the veil on the details surrounding the Pari Club refund and the consultant's claim to professional fees of 418 million US dollars. The summary of his submission was that the Association of Local Governments of Nigeria, Algon, engaged the consultants to recover over deductions of over $3.188 billion due to them from the Pari Club refund. Algon, he further submitted, was party to the litigations to secure the consultant's fee and also issued a letter of no objection to payment to consultants. The federal government, he said, engaged the DSS and EFCC to investigate and verify all the facts. When we eventually were confronted with this judgment, we took steps to find out whether there were some fraudulent undertones and engage EFCC and DSS to look into it and advise us. And then we wrote and forwarded the first two Algon and governors for them. This is the situation we are in. What is your position? And then Algon wrote by a letter dated September 8, 2017, that we have no objection. The minister says the president has set up a cabinet committee to ensure final resolution of the matter. So that the issues, the parties can now be brought to the table to deliberate on it out of desire for transparency and accountability. The attorney general was urged to make all the information pertaining to the transaction available to the public whose interest needs to be served. It would be good for Nigerians to know all those documents that the attorney general have displayed to Nigerians today, it should be uploaded to the website. Let Nigerians continue the conversation. Even the court where some of these judgments are entered into, as time proceeds, the people of Nigeria will begin to appear in those courts. So that we begin to demand that this culture of impunity will end. So it's not issue that these few people can discuss and end. So the first thing is to have access to information. There has been a lingering face-off between the Nigerian Governors Forum and the Attorney General of the Federation over the payments to the consultants. In Abuja, Ikemini Williams, NTN News. Governor Abubakar Atiku Bagudu has lauded President Muhammad Buhari's administration for the establishment of the National Agency for Science and Engineering Infrastructures, Scale Acquisition Center, and Agricultural Machinery and Equipment Development Institute in Kebbi State. 
Governor Bagudu made the commendation by flagging off a five-day skills acquisition training and youth empowerment organized by Naseni in Berlin KB. Usman Abdullahi Shehu reports. The theme for the five days trendy trainee program is more than farming methods using improved farming implement in Kebi State, which 100 participants are the prospective beneficiaries. Governor Abubakar Atiku Bagudu, who challenged the participants to use their available opportunities to compete internationally, described the event as a recognition of the unflinching federal government commitment to sustain agricultural development in the country. He expressed appreciation of the people of the state for the recent presidential approval to establish the institution and the skills center in the state. Let me assure you that KB State takes this opportunity and confidence that has been placed on us very serious and we will partner, we will ensure that we support as a state, as a people, we reciprocate. The Minister of Justice and Attorney General of the Federation, SAN Abubakar Malemi, stated that the training program will go a long way in addressing the phenomena of unemployment, ensuring food security and agricultural revolution. And what you are here to offer by way of support to creation of employment, bringing about the desired improvement in uh, agricultural skills production, mechanized farming among others, is certainly not a misplaced priority. The executive vice chairman of Naseni, Professor MS Haruna, who lauded federal government on flinching commitment to the country's agricultural transformation over the years, appreciated Governor Bagudu's contribution in that direction, adding that it is through agencies like Naseni that the world's best economies drive their success. The trainees are carefully selected. They just need some techniques. They need some scientific method to improve other speakers who graced the event described the agency as a springboard for Nigeria's industrial development. Ashura Adamu, on behalf of the participant assured commitments, highlight of the event include the presentation of presidential approval letter of establishment of the Skills Acquisition Center in Bagudu to the governor and presentation of modern equipment to the participants to ease their farming practices. In Brunei Kebi, Usman Abdullahi Shehu, NTA News. The federal government has intervened to avert impending strike by the National Union of Electricity Employees. The Minister of State for Power, Gordi Jadiaba, in a letter to the leadership of the union states that federal government has taken cognizance of complaints raised by the union and is committed to proffering solutions that will be acceptable to all parties in the next two weeks. The National Union of Electricity Employees had threatened to embark on nationwide strike with effect from 17th of August 2022 over allegations of poor staff welfare by the Transmission Company of Nigeria, TCN. Issues of staff promotion and stigmatization of staff from the Office of the Head of Service of the Federation from working in other areas in the past sector. Also of concern to the electricity workers is the inability of market operator to fund the payment of entitlement of former PACN staff. And for more reports on Nationwide, we join Hingino in our Lagos Network Center. Hello, Hingino. Thank you, Ifoma. The federal government is committed to ensuring timely preparation and submission of the annual budget in line with its public financial management reforms. Director General, Budget Office of the Federation, Ben Akaboize affirmed this stance at an interactive session with representatives of MDAs and preparation for 2023 budget estimate. Abola De Salami reports. Budget presentation by the executive to the legislative arm of government for consideration and passage in time past suffered some level of setback, thereby causing huge loopholes to the actualization of some mapped out plans. The federal government in fulfillment of its agenda on public finance management from 2020 till date commenced the January to December budget cycle as part of measures to drive accountability. Unlike the former method where they pass it on to the budget office and then we begin to collate. This era, they prepare and they input. The only thing that we do is to collate all of them and make it a document. In order for the 2023 budget proposal to meet up with the September directive by Mr. President, 
the Budget Office of the Federation has commenced a series of activities related to preparation, including engagement with stakeholders, consultations with key relevant revenue generating agencies, and trainings of personnel of MDAs that will be involved in budget preparation. One big thing about this is that we have also tried to make the budget more comprehensive. And so we have um, introduced the revenue side, uh, uh, revenue recognition. We've asked that they should report these revenues so that we are not under reporting government's revenue or government expenditures. While the training is said to provide continuous learning meant to equip budget personnel with requisite knowledge, skills, and required tools to prepare and submit the 2023 budget in a timely and efficient manner. The session also afforded participants opportunities to compare notes. I got to know much about the preparation of budgets through this training session. The knowledge sharing exercise will involve over 4,000 participants responsible for budget preparation from 900 MDAs. In Lagos, Abeladi Salami, NTA News. Close to 4,000 kilograms of cannabis sativa with street value of 308 million naira have been handed over to the National Drug Law Enforcement Agency, NDLEA. The drugs are recent seizure by the Federal Operations Unit, Zone A, of the Nigeria Customs Service, in which two suspects were also arrested. Michael Olale reports. The dimension of threats to internal security, no doubt, is connected with the inflow and distribution of illicit substances and drugs. These are products of some of the various attempts made daily to expand the network. But the Federal Operations Unit Zone A of the Nigeria Customs Service, armed with robust information and surveillance, nipped one of such efforts in the board. Ebuka Mbamalu was arrested along Ogere in Laru Expressway in possession of 627 kilograms of cannabis sativa and Iruka Chita had 80 parcels of same substance in his custody. Bandits, Boko Haram, they use all this substance to charge them up in a way to allow them carry out their dastardly acts. It is our responsibility to ensure that illicit items do not find their way in. To the NDLEA, it is a relationship with many wings on its sleeves attributed to the customs, and sustaining these is imperative in the enduring journey of stamping out drug abuse totally in the country. We have a, a grand strategy called WADA against drug abuse that we're trying to take to the grassroots so that we're able to enlighten people for them to make the right choices in their life. The Federal Operations Unit Zone A of the Nigeria Customs Service used the platform to signal its willingness to continue supporting interagency collaboration aimed at ridding the country of smuggled goods and dangerous products. In Lagos, Michael Alaleye, NT News. Do not forget to follow this news broadcast live on our website at nta.ng slash live and on our other social media handles displayed on your screen for updates. Time for a break. The news will be back shortly with Suleiman in Kaduna. Against addiction and substance abuse in Nigeria, I have found a partnership with National Drug Law Enforcement Agency and the LEA presents a one day awareness conference. The drug and, and substance abuse, abuse. effects on mental health and national security. Host His Royal Highness, a large Dr. Yahya Abuwaka, CFR, Etsumube Chairman, BOT, I Special guests of honor, His Excellency, Professor Yemi Oshibajo, Vice President, Federal Republic of Nigeria. Chairman of the occasion, Brigadier General Duba Marwa. Tired. Chairman, National Drug Law Enforcement Agency. Royal Father of the Day, His Royal Majesty, King Dr. Edmund M. Dalkuro. Mother of the Day, Her Excellency Ambassador Dr. Olu Polake Abdurazak, First Lady of Clara State. Date. Thursday, 18th August, 2022. Venue. Nigerian Army Legal Center, Asokoro Abuja. Time, 10 a.m. prompts. For participation and sponsorship, contact 0811 922 2221. Come, let's tame the title of drug and substance. 
abuse in Nigeria. Announcer, Ambassador Princess Raphael, CEO, Ayasan. Nigerians, elections are here again. Let us shun violence. Let us play the game according to the rules. Do not be a thug. Say no to violence. Let's rise and defeat violence, crime, and sabotage against the peace of our nation. Nigeria is the only country we have. We must do everything to keep it united. We must avoid any act that promotes hate and disintegration. Say no to separatist movement, terrorism, fake news, hate speech, religious bigotry, and any act that tends to divide us as a nation. Watch out for strange gatherings and suspicious movements. Restrict access to sensitive documents and data, the disclosure of which may damage national security. Educate your staff and family, particularly on measures to safeguard information and report security breaches. Apply relevant legal security guidelines to protect yourself and your neighbors. Due to misinformation and wrong choices, some idle persons resort to vices in their greed to get rich quick. They resort to kidnapping, killings for rituals, and and other heinous crimes. Avoid wrong use of the social media. Before you broadcast that false message, think twice. Ask whether it will promote peace or violence. For safety at home, still be security conscious. Educate your household on safety tips. Report all suspicious movements and persons to the security agencies nearest to you. Be a good citizen. Be patriotic. To pass security information, please call 0813-222-2105-0915-3391309-0908-837-3514 or send a mail to dsspr at dss.gov.ng. This message is from the Department of State Services, DSS. <laughs> Imagine any society without laws. Imagine piles of laws without the courts to interpret them. Imagine lots of interpretation without a medium to bring them to your doorstep. The scheme of the network service of the Nigerian Television Authority helps to fill the gaps and turns law and justice into a tangible instrument for national development. That is the scale, and it is you know there in our Lagos Network Center the ongoing upgrade and rehabilitation of federal government routes will be completed before the end of May next year. This is in line with present administration's commitment to improve routes infrastructure for socio-economic growth. Minister of State for Works and Housing, Omar Ibrahim Eliakou, said this during an inspection of federal projects in Kanu. Muhammad Ali reports. Kano Bozo to the single country for so many years has been in bad condition, claiming lives and property. Successive administrations have made concerted efforts to realize a road that yielded no results. Administration. The contract was awarded in December 2020 with a completion period of 24 months. The 83.52 kilometer dual carriageway so far has been cleared with artwork filling an asphaltic binder course. Minister of State for Works, Umar Ibrahim Elia Kobo's visit to the site is like a homecoming where he has passed satisfaction with a piece of work. The benefits arising from the implementation of this project are elements. Certainly, it reduces the traffic on the streets, it shortens the time for travel. Of course, it comes as you are approaching now, with the multiplier economic effects of you being on site. To all the settlements of communities along the corridor of the world. The minister was also on a 26.6 kilometer western bypass and urged the contracting firm to complete the project before the end of 2022. I'll try to do our best, but you must also rise up and do what you have to do because we need to deliver this. While in Kano, 
Emil Eliakuru inspected the 76 housing units of phase 1 and 2 at Jabapani so under the National Housing Programme. Muhammad Raibu Ali. 20,000 women and youths are to benefit from livestock production development program, an initiative of Kano State Government to tap from potentials in animal husbandry and generate employment. The sector is also to increase beef and mutton production. Abdullah Mustafa reports. 20,000 beneficiaries are to receive 100% financial support in goat reproduction, while 5,500 others will get 50% support in cattle fattening scheme. Also to enjoy 50% financial support are a set of 4,800 women and youth all go into sheep and goat fattening. When successfully implemented, the scheme is expected to create 12,000 metric tons of incremental beef and mutton for improved nutrition. Hafsat Muhammad Kabir is just screening the first batch of direct beneficiaries of the Kano Set Cattle, Sheep and Goats Reproduction Program. It is part of initiatives under the Kano Agro Pastoral Development Project, which aims to create jobs and additional income generating activities among women and youth. The objective of the program is uh, to empower youth and women and other extremely uh, poor and vulnerable people among the project beneficiaries. This is in addition to the economic benefits to be enjoyed by Hafset and other direct and indirect beneficiaries during the five year implementation period in Kano. Abdullah Mustafa, NTA News. Well, that report is back to Ifoma in Abuja for the rest of the stories. Good afternoon. Thank you very much, Suleiman. Now, associated aging problems confronting the elderly in Nigeria are gradually being addressed as a national pool of trainers are being equipped with requisite knowledge to set up models for care quality evaluation. Elizabeth Omori reports that the trainers converge on Abuja for a three-day master trainers workshop on care of the elderly at the instance of the National Senior Citizens Center. So, yeah, so far. It's because the man now. Now, no financial prosperity. To grow old is an opportunity and a stage in life many wish to attain in good health. But some challenges ranging from mobility, sight and hearing impairments, and isolation usually accompany this critical stage in life. As a solution to these challenges, the NSCC, UNDESA, and critical actors in geriatrics are equipping social caregivers with skills to develop standard guidelines for establishment of active senior centers for qualitative care. There are 42 MDAs that have now signed up to collaborate with the senior is the human rights of older persons. We cannot hide behind culture, cultural contexts, and then promote abuse. Assessing the ecosystem for social inclusion and active participation of senior citizens, Margaret Udofot posits that communication and respect are core values to adopt. We're seeing the NSCC as um, a platform that would generate programs, give us the roadmap that the states can follow. The caregivers are expected to identify core competencies and come up with guidelines cutting across entrepreneurial skills to make life better for the elderly. In Abuja, Elizabeth Omori, NT News. The Chief of Army Staff, Lieutenant General Faruqi Haya, says the Nigerian Army will re-engage its veterans to enhance theater operations in tackling insecurity across the country. The Chief of Army Staff was speaking at the opening ceremony of third quarter of 2022 Veteran Affairs Seminar and Workshop of 3rd Division of the Nigerian Army held in Yula. Simon Asha reports. The capacity building seminar for serving and retired army officers is to cross fertilize ideas chief of army staff Lieutenant general farubi Aya, represented by the general officer commanding three division just more general brian ali says 
Despite the success recorded in the counterinsurgency operation, among other security challenges in the country, the Nigerian Army, through combined efforts of serving and retired officers, will be better positioned to tackle the insecurity situation in the country. Uh, when they were in the service and now they were out, the way they look at things might be a bit different. And it's very important that uh, their ideas and the way they see the society from their own perspective is put into consideration so that we can uh, collectively uh, better the security in the country. We are the people that are closer to the community. And that is the reason that they invited us here so that we can put our head together to bring some things out. The five-day seminar with a theme harnessing the skills of Nigerian Army veterans for national security is expected to come up with security solutions in the country. In Yola, Simon Asha, and News. There is need for chartered institutes of treasury management to complement Ministry of Education's drive in preparing and arming Nigerian youths to take competitive advantage, advantage of the 21st century knowledge-driven economy within and outside the country. Minister of State Education, good luck, Nana Opia, said this at the inauguration of registrar and council members of the institute to make it more resourceful. With this, the council will ensure that the mandate enshrined in the act for the council is achieved. Chartered Institute of Treasury Management is particularly important to the education sector because it will help to ensure that finances are located to the sector by government, civil society, and non governmental obligations viciously utilized for the achievement of the ministry three focal areas of access quality and systems strengthening, and of course, the timely attendant of the ministry's technical of education for change. A ministerial strategic plan that must be. The Treasury Management has been established as a requisite targeting sustainable development through strategic approach to innovative deployment of both public and private finance to safeguard resources and ensure value for money. For Nigeria's democratic experience to achieve enviable status, quality graduates with deep-rooted knowledge of legislative activities will have a role to play. This is the line of thought of the Director General of the National Institute of Legislative Studies, Professor Suleiman Abubakar, during the ninth matriculation of UNIBEN and the Institute's postgraduate program held in Abuja. Also, shoots, jubilation, and excitement were visible features of the day, as virtually every available space in the hall were occupied by matriculants and their well wishes. The management of the school wants the students to bring in their best in the academic engagement ahead. All the total profile academics and professionals who expect the best from you to be successful, all of you must commit to respecting the rules and regulations of the institute and participate fully in all schedule activities. Our expectations of you are very high. We believe that as mature students, you will be you will not disappoint us. Rather, you will be the best that you could possibly be and be among our students and graduates who are writing the university's name into relevance everywhere. Remember, however, that it is not all about the beginning. You should also finish and very well too. As a tradition to be found worthy in learning and character during the period of their studies, the students took matriculation oath. With this excitement, it is expected that the matriculants are to give the program all the required attention to make a difference. I feel so happy because for a long time I've been trying to, you know, improve my knowledge in my place of work and this is a very good opportunity to do that. Well, I've become a student. First, you expect from me hard work, commitment, and then eventually success. And that success should lead me back to where I work with 71 out of the 85 were inducted into the master's program, while the remaining 14 were for HND program. From the National Assembly, Mobolaji, Mori Beri, NTA News.
the presidential candidate of the Accord Party for the 2023 presidential election, Christopher Imumolen, unveils former SSG to Zamfara State's government, Bala Bello Maru, as his running mate for the 2023 presidential election. Linda Okorigwe reports. The stage is set. And with high enthusiasm, the Accord Party unveils Belo Balamaro as running mate to Christopher Imumelin in the 2023 presidential election. To them, it is a game changer and certain qualities, they say, inform their decision. I am very sure and convinced that this game that we are going to which are conquer and be victorious. With high optimism, the vice presidential candidate reveals reasons for his acceptance. Based on the discussions we had on where Nigeria was, where Nigeria is, and where Nigeria should be, he felt he was satisfied to be me as the vice presidential candidate. And I pledge to work as seriously, carefully, in order to see that our only digital candidates deliver on this mandate. So our court is back again to reclaim the lost glories of this our great nation, Nigeria. And we believe it is the youth that can do this. Before unveiling of the vice presidential candidate, the party held its neck meeting where several issues were deliberated on how to move the party forward. In Abuja, Linda Okori Igwe, NTA News. Time to join Comfort in our Indigo Network Center. Hello, Comfort. Hello and welcome to Enugu Network Center. Minister of Foreign Affairs Jeffrey Onyema has emphasized the need for the All Progressives Congress APC in Enugu State to harmonize the party in view of the task of taking over governance of the state in 2023. Jeffrey Onyema was speaking at an interactive session with Kusike political family of the APC in Enugu State. Timaroke Ugu completes the story. The forum was organized as a post meeting to examine the activities of the party after the conventions, looking into the challenges of the party factors and prefer solutions to how it can remain formidable. Well, the most important thing is unity. If we are not united as a party, we will say, as an APC or an opposition party, we are not going to succeed. So I think my, um, my main job is to try and see if we can bring everybody together. There is no doubt in it at the moment that um, there is a division. Some party members bear their minds on the challenges facing the progress of the party in Enugu State. <laughs> The CK political family of All Progressive Congress APC was founded by the Foreign Minister Jeffrey Oyama on the principles of the party's manifesto, which unifies the members of the party, creates certain values and vision to deliver the mandate of the party. In Enugu, Chimaroke Ugu NTA News. And Chairman, Senate Committee on Science, Technology and Innovation, Senator Ute Ekunife says the committee is committed to partner the Enugu Based Projects Development Institute, PROGA to realize aims and objectives of establishing it. She was speaking when she led the committee members on a visit to the agency. Timonoye reports. 
of the Olubu Base Project Development Institute, a manufacturing engine room during the Civil War, where a self prepared rocket gun known as Olubu in local parlance was manufactured during the Civil War. After the Civil War, the agency was enlisted as one of the 17 agencies under the Ministry of Science and Technology. In 2018, the agency was studied with the responsibility of leading the revolution of Nigeria producing pencils, and in 2019, the Puda Pencil Project was inaugurated. However, despite huge sums of money and budgetary allocations into the agency, the agency seemed not to have done much, and the Senate committee members who visited the agency on a fact-finding mission and to acquire information for policy making are not so excited about this development. Telling the project that some are not satisfied or are satisfied by the one from the government. We are going to call the agency to discuss with them on the ways of assisting the potential completion of the project. Well, all hope is not lost. As the newly appointed Director General Poda, who is just about two months in office, says he is committed to ensuring the mission and vision of the establishment is actualized. <laughs> It is hoped that the leaders of the agency would walk the talk for the agency to reclaim its pride of place in Enugu, Chinenye Nguye, NTA News. And that's our contribution from Enugu. Remember, you can follow this news broadcast live on our website at www.nta.ng slash live and all our social media handles displayed on your screen for update. We'll take another break here. Nationwide will continue with Ifoma in Abuja after this break. Stay with us. It's life. Once you lose hope, you lose life. Once people get you to a certain level, they start feeling godlike. What would you attribute this backwardness education to in the not today? What's right is right. What's wrong is wrong. What's wrong? What's wrong? What's wrong? The program is reflection. Nigeria Golf Federation announces its first Nigeria Golf Federation Summit. This summit will discuss salient topical issues that relate to the development and upliftment of golf in Nigeria. Chairman General IBM Haruna, Special Guest of Honor, Honorable Minister of Sports Mr. Sunday Dare, Convener Otumba Orushaguru Shewe, OON, President Nigeria Golf Federation, date 31st August to 2nd September 2022, venue Ladikwali Hall, Sheraton Hotel and Towers, Abuja, time 10 a.m. prompt. This event is supported by Polaris Bank, Nigerian Television Authority, NTA, Africa Independent Television, AIT, Golf Garden, Anchor Insurance and Royal Ceramics. Otumba Orushaguru Shewe, OON, President Nigeria Golf Federation, announcer. Harmony of biodiversity is poor, both in climate crisis and crime phases. Dicey situation indeed, yet we carry on like a bull in a china shop. On environment matters, we take the bull by the horns, comb the looks and cranny of Nigeria. Asking tough questions. Examining challenges and opportunities. Giving human face to the science, facts, facts, and global agreements. It's a call for action. Don't miss it. Join award-winning environmental journalist Jennifer Igwe and other NTA Eco reporters for Environment Matters. Welcome back. The use of renewable energy reduction of greenhouse gas emission as strategies to mitigate impacts of climate change in Nigeria. This is a submission of some experts in Akure on climate change mitigation. Kayode or Long Diary reports. 
As the world's population continues to grow, so does the amount of garbage that people produce. The accumulation of these products has led to increase of plastic pollution around the world. As plastic is composed of major toxic pollutants, it has the potential of causing significant harm to the environment in form of air, water and land pollution. If you say you want to landfill, the landfill, there are some uh, chemicals, there are some emissions, methane especially, that will be generated by those things that you have buried. At the end of the day, they will also emit into the atmosphere. If they don't go into the atmosphere, they will emit into the soil. If they don't emit into the soil, they will emit into the groundwater. And we all depend on all of this for our survival. So, to me, the most formidable strategy is to go on recycling. They also warned against the burning of plastic, as this can lead to harmful atmosphere condition and deadly illnesses in Akure, Abiola, Rio, NCA News. That was Abiola, Rio, and not um, Coyote, as we earlier told you. A new National Park Service regulation has been launched in response to some of the challenges facing park rangers on the course of performing their duties. This is part of activities observed in commemoration of this year's World Rangers Day. Ekene Ndule reports. It is my first time of coming close to a water buck in the wild. Thanks to Habila Atta, who has been a park ranger for the past 27 years, protecting wildlife and conserving biodiversity. Attacks from bandits, poachers and loggers is no doubt a clear and present danger for those in this line of duty. The roll call of fallen heroes at this year's commemoration of World Rangers Day is a sad reminder that rangers require better firearms and improved welfare. This set of criminals ruthlessly attack park rangers with sophisticated weapons, such as AK-47 rifles, and either maim or kill them in the line of duty. A total number of 17 park rangers fell victims to homicide between 2020 and 2021. It is high of a sad to note also that these rangers are always underappreciated because they work in remote places and are not often on the media spotlight. The launch of the new National Park Service regulation has the intent of guiding the use of firearms with synergy from the regular armed forces. Planting of trees by the Minister of Environment signals the end of the commemoration. But these unsung heroes can only pray and hope that it is the foundation of better conditions for park rangers. Ekene Ndulue, NTA News. Next is sports updates. Third good games at the ongoing World Cup in Costa Rica begins on Wednesday with, with a fixtures between World Football Powerhouse Brazil and host Costa Rica, while Australia lock ons with Spain. In Group B, it will be Colombia versus New Zealand as Mexico takes on Germany. Nigeria's Group C encounter with Canada is scheduled for the 18th of August 2022. In grassroots football, 32 football academies and clubs participated in the third edition of Dominion football competition. The competition was in under 13, 17, 19, and 23 categories for boys. In the other 17 final, Mountain Top beat future stars on penalties after the match ended one all in regulation time. Talent abounds every nook and credits of this country. If only everyone can put in their little bits, Nigeria will not be what it is today. But well, I can assure you that it can only get better. In boxing, it was a 10 round of fierce battle between Nigeria's for Tai Nuruddin and Patrick Ayi of Ghana as the two countries rekindled their rivalry in the world of boxing at the 2022 International Federalweight Challenge. The Ghanaian was later declared the winner by unanimous decision of the officials. We know that I can win. We know, we know the veggies very well. We fight Mama. I will pick the point. I pick him very well. So, unfortunately, they said he's the one that won. But when that guy 
was beaten and fell out of the ring. His own corner went to bring him back to the ring. That is this qualification. So I want to use this opportunity to call on corporate bodies and government institutions to look into how to develop sports in this country. You have the talents, you have the boys, you have the girls that can make Nigeria proud. There were other bouts in various categories to keep Nigeria boxers fit for international engagement. With Sports Update, Olinde Kutwala, NT News. And that is nationwide for today. We thank you for watching. Remember, you can be a star, stand against rape and rapists. Bye for now.